understanding, not a particular piece of equipment. When you actually design a system for a particular use, whether it be high seafood holding systems, um, quarantine systems, culture systems, brood stock systems, you name a number of them. Whenever you go and design, the basic logic has to be, how do we do this? What do the species require? What does the customer require? What does the location require? And this is the, the grounding of the Cypress technology. You don't apply a particular type of filtration technology to everything. It doesn't necessarily apply to a lobster or a fish or a squid, for instance. So what we need to do is we need to take all the variables, which I just discussed earlier, being customer requirements, market and location and species, and we need to pick out the pieces that we need to achieve. For instance, a live holding system might require one tonne of fish to come through the system every two days. Whereas a longer term holding system, which might be a restaurant, might need to hold 500 kilos of fish and some lobster. So all the design criteria are totally different. In terms of culture unit, being the actual space where you keep the livestock alive, and then filtration. Different types of filtration are, that are applied to different types of species. Lobsters produce a hell of a lot more ammonia than they do any other type of pollutant in the water. Whereas a fish, doesn't produce as much ammonia when initially introduced into a unit. So we apply different types of mechanical filtration to combat the different things that have been applied to the system at different times. Can I Sikra systems are a modulised type of technology with the correct combination and application of design, equipment, equipment, husbandry. We can adapt or modify to get the required chemistry and we can adjust it up or down as we wish. This enables us to be able to hold any number or numerous species of marine or freshwater livestock and almost any coastal app or inland application. The, the crux of a secret system is the filter design. There's many, many facets of filter design. We're looking at biological filtration, mechanical filtration, chemical filtration, and electronic filtration. There's also support systems which are diaphragm air compressors, electronics, things of that nature, ozone generators. In this particular system, we're using a fluidized bed filter. A fluidized bed filter is something that offers a very large surface area, which gives you the capacity to carry greater biological loads, but it with a very, very small physical footprint. The nature of trying to design around a small physical footprint is basically it reduces running costs. It costs a lot of money to move water, so the, the less amount of water that we can actually have to relocate through a filter or through different pieces of equipment re reduces our overall running, running costs. It also means we can purchase smaller pumps, which then reduces the overall cost of the system. Supporting systems that go along with this are the mechanical filtration. A lot of people are under the misunderstanding that mechanical filtration is part of what keeps the fish alive. That's not necessarily so. The only thing that actually keeps the fish alive in a system is the biological filtration. This is a very, very exact equation that has to be made, uh, being weighed up against the biological load, being the livestock you're trying to carry in your system, the amount of bacteria you're trying to grow in your system, the amount of food inputs or waste that has been produced by your system, you use this with a mathematical equation and you actually can come up with a surface area that you have to design your filters around. Taking this along to the next step, we have to look at the type of mechanical filtration that gets put in conjunction with that. Once again, we mentioned earlier about the differences between lobster and finfish. This applies at this stage. What we need to look at is we've now calculated the size of the filter to carry on and support the biological load. We now have to look at what type of mechanical filtration best suits that type of biological filtration. This is a secret design logic. So what we're actually looking at here is in this particular unit, we're using a simple screen type filter. This is basically like uh, the equivalent of a strainer. Basically, water passes through the screen with the Dacron cloth inside. Basically, what it does is it filters down to half a micron. Okay, for this particular type of um, filtration design using fluidized bed filters, we have to be very mindful of sedimented water getting through into the biological filter because it clogs it up. Other types of mechanical filtration being used on this, on this system is this particular little unit here. This is a small version of a foam fractionator. Commonly used in the aquarium keeping industry as a protein skimmer. The main differences between a protein skimmer and a fractionator is a protein skimmer sits in the water with an internal pump or a submerged pump. A fractionator sits external to the system with an external pump and they generally do larger capacities. A fractionator is a unit that actually is used to lift 
and it dissolves solids out of the system. If I was to actually take my pen and drop it in the system and bleed ink into the system, the foam fractionator is the unit that would remove the ink from the system. So moving along, once we've calculated all these individual different types of so we've got our biological capacity, we've worked out the right type of mechanical filtration to be applied to the system to do the right job, because we understand what type of species, our environment, we then have to look at pumping. And pumping capacity is a very important issue. We have to make sure we apply the right ratio through the system for what we're trying to achieve. Once again, whether it be a lobster, a turtle, a freshwater fin fish, or a saltwater fin fish, they all have different requirements in terms of flow rate and exchange. We also have to be mindful when we're doing this design, the actual capacity or the rates that we push through our biological filters. If we apply too much pressure into a biological filter, we wash away a nitrifying bacteria. If you don't pass it through, at the right or correct rate, which is enough, basically the bacteria starves. We don't give them enough food, which they can convert into energy. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. We have to actually get the right combination. Also, we have to look at when we apply mechanical filtration to the system, what we're also doing is putting back pressure on our pumps. So they actually act against the flow rate. So we have to take all these things into account, which then leads us to our next design criteria, which is pumping dynamics. Pumping dynamics is probably the most singular, important piece of technology that you apply to one of these systems. Getting past the issues of actually having to be able to calculate the right surface area and flow rate through a biological filter, um, and then applying proper mechanical filtration, pipe, pumping, uh, sorry, piping dynamics would be one of the most important issues. Most people, when they design a system, either go too large with pipe or too small with pipe. This can be either very good or very, very bad. Depending on, once again, the species, what you're trying to achieve. If we use too small a pipe, we can put pressure back on a pump, requiring us to get our flow rates in our tank, we have to then get larger pumps, bigger pumps, bigger pumps, bigger pumps, to get the water deliverable to the tank that we're looking for. If we actually get the right size piping, we can actually use a smaller pump, use electricity. Once again, aquaculture being a business, whether it be holding live fish or growing a fish, it is a business that's about reducing overheads, right, making more money. So once again, also buying too large a pipe, you get what they call water flop. You don't get the water to move the way that you would like it to move throughout the system, and you lose control of your fluid dynamics, which is not what you want to do. Part of smart citrus design is being able to use gravity or pressure to create the right types of flow and water exchange inside the tank. You actually need to get the tank to work in your favour. Most people look at the tank as just being a culture vessel or a, or a utensil that you place things in. That is not how it should be viewed. Part of smart citrus design is you should look at the shape of the tank, the type of materials that you're using, and the way that you want to apply current into that system. Because what that end up giving you, if you can get the tank to work in your favour, once again you reduce running costs and increase efficiency within the system. All that said and done, what we're basically trying to apply here is if we apply the right system for the right job, for the right species, in the right marketplace, what we're effectively doing is reduce mortality, we can increase effectiveness of the system. For instance, if you're a live seafood holder, you bring fish in, they've had quite an arduous travel, been held a little bit longer at the airport, missed a flight, got dropped off at the wrong airport, whatever it might be, in transit for an extra six or seven hours. They mightn't come out of the bags or out of the packing materials quite as healthy or as, or as alert as you'd hope for. In a properly designed citrus system with right, right dissolved oxygen levels, good chemical balances within the system, the product will actually bounce back very, very quickly. You'll actually reduce your mortality, which actually helps out the hip pocket quite a lot. As we said earlier, Citrus technology can be a, a design to a lot of different design criteria. For instance, this particular system that we're looking at now is an R&D project in de developed by a West Australian company. Main purpose is marine finfish. It's holding a particularly valuable species, panther groper, or in Chinese low sea tongue. This particular fish and this system 
Uh, a very, very the particular species of fish is a very difficult fish to, to manage in an incorrectly designed system. This system was designed around all their needs and requirements. Water depth, dissolved oxygen level, flow rate, everything has been designed specifically around this species of fish. This animal is not a very strong swimmer, so we've had to look at re-engineering the way that we take the water in and out of the system. So we've created a four-port circular draw in the drain rather than a normal vortex or whirlpool motion to take the water out of the tank. This has given us control over the way we move the water around inside the tank and this has also made a very comfortable environment for the fish. This system here has a 500 kilo growing capacity, once again stating that it's only an R&D. It covers, encompasses all types of system um, filtration design. We're using UV lights for disease control and water clarity. We're using heat and chill units for exact temperature control. Um, we're also using very large mechanical filtrations in the form of a swirl separator and fluidized bed filters once again on this system. We've got support systems in the firm type of a compressor, diaphragm compressor um, aerator and we're using a very, very large um, foam fractionator on this system. Basically, the whole nature of what we've achieved here um, has gained a lot of attention. This whole system runs off pressure. All the lines are full of water. We've pumped all the air out of the system. So we had to teach this system to suck. It draws water like a vacuum cleaner from the center of the tank. So the big party trick here was learning how to get it to suck when the power went off. So when the power goes off, we need to break the cycle. When the power comes back on, we need to teach it to suck again. This is a task that took us about a month to actually figure out. But once we have achieved that task, now we've actually developed this new type of technology. The flow rate for this system is around about 27,500 litres per hour. These fish demand a very high exchange rate, but in saying that, they also require a, a very light current. What I'll do now is just turn the current off so we can have a look at the fish in the tanks. We're using new type of uh, design criteria here. We're using air bar technology to control the water movement inside the tank. And look at the clarity of that water, pristine. These fish require no turbid water, no sedimentation. They can't tolerate that sort of thing. They also like an exact water depth. There's 500 individuals in here. Average body weight in the ballpark around 75 to 80 grams. Right down to the all the materials being used on this tank are heavy duty plastics, right down to the actual tank design, the culture vessel. Um, the particular inside edges of the tanks are all scalloped, so we've had the whole tank engineered specifically for this species. These little fish are currently eating a size three pallet, they're just moving over onto a size five pallet. So they're growing along quite nicely. Currently growing technology on this animal has been uh, in sea pens and cages, which is equivalent of a, a jetty coming off the beach and having the cages along the side. Uh, but they've been experiencing growing times of around about 18 months to 500 grams and mortality in the region of around about 60%. Uh, with, our, with this R&D uh, and the growth rates that we're currently achieving, we're predicting a growing time to 500 grams of around about 9 to 10 months. And uh, to, to, to date, we've only had, uh, we've had zero mortality in the system. This same sort of technology could be applied to um, coral trout, Queensland groper, um, Napoleon rasp, pumpkin rasp any type of marine fish species, this system would actually be super quite nice. Within our aquaculture group of professionals, being marketing people, right through to design and construction, I specialise in the design work. So whenever a new customer gets brought to us through one of our many contacts, I'm the person that spends the time with the customer discussing the hows, the whys and the wants from the system. I'm the guy that actually sits down and does all the mathematics and keeps running back and forth to the customer until we achieve a product that will deliver their market requirements. We're the guys that will sit down and actually look and make a 
recommendations on species type. We quite often get approached by a customer that's looking to grow a particular species and we can offer one or two other versions or other types of species that might be more profitable or a little bit more achievable in their market or their environment. So these are the things that have to be understood. Cigarettes, once again, it's not just a design logic and it's not just a piece of equipment, it's also about the people that help, help or make it happen.